In my many travels across the country, I speak to dozens of doctors about health care reform, and I've not heard a single physician with a private practice who supports the president's health care proposal as it is. But how about the doctor who called Barack Obama his patient for over 20 years? Joining us from Chicago, the president's former personal physician, Dr. David Shiner. And Dr. Shiner, welcome. We're delighted to have you here tonight. I think that you may be uh, maybe one of those exceptions. You believe that we ought to have a single-payer system. Is that correct? Yeah. What I want for patients, I want them to have freedom of choice. I want patients to have freedom of choice. And under a single-payer, they do have that. Under private insurance, over the last 40 years, I have seen them interfere in caring for patients repeatedly. In 40 years, Medicare has never once interfered with the kind of care that I try to administer. Almost every day, the private insurance companies do something to interrupt the kind of care that I would want to deliver. I don't know why they should be trusted. The other thing is the cost of administering private health care is about $400 billion a year. In our office, we had two full-time people just to handle private insurance. If we, you had universal Medicare, we would eliminate that. The $400 billion could cover the $50 million who are uninsured. I think it is a moral outrage that we have 50 million people without health insurance and many other millions who are underinsured. You know, I don't understand why the people aren't screaming to see that they get care. This but is Dr. Shiner, horrible. We the have number, to have Dr. Shiner, the number of the 50 million uninsured, if you start extrapolating that down, you know that there's 12 million who are illegals. There are about 10 million people who could have insurance. They choose to use their money for other things, but they could afford it. There are other people who qualify for existing government programs. They just don't sign up for them. There's probably about 5 million people who just can't get insurance because of pre-existing conditions. So is it really the goal to get those 5 million insured and, and recognize that there's some people that aren't insured because they choose not to be? Everyone should be insured. If they're not insured, you know, 60% of all bankruptcy, personal bankruptcies, are from medical bills. But if I think it is our obligation be, did, are, to see do that. Do you think we should force them? Should we force them into I an think insurance everybody program? Should, I think everybody should, uh, should have Medicare. I think there should be a universal health coverage. When these people have an automobile accident, the young people who have no health insurance, they might pay for the rest of their lives to try to get out of the debt that they'll incur. I think everyone should be, have a card that they are a subscri subscriber to Medicare. I don't think they should, and I think the illegals, I, they do our work for us. I think we should be uh, should giving them medical it? care too. But I think then who should pay for that? Should, should all the other taxpayers pay well, for that? Or should each individual have some buy-in and some skin in the game? You know, I, Abraham Heschel said, you cannot have liberty without compassion. And I think we're not showing much compassion. We have to, all of us are responsible to see that everyone has health care. We're the only Western nation without a national health program, the only one. Now, are all the other countries of the world wrong and we have somehow the only right answer? It is, it's embarrassing. Well, but Dr. Schneider, we also that, have some extraordinary I'm, things like freedom of press and freedom of speech, and we have some other liberties. I, I guess my point is, and I, and I want to maybe not go too far into this, because I want to ask your opinion. President Obama in 2003 believed in a single-payer system. Let me just play the tape. I'm sure you've heard it. This is a brief quote from I know him. It, yes. Okay. Let's hear how do we get the federal government to take care of its business? I happen to be a proponent of a single-payer universal health care plan. When did the president change his mind? Because he says now he's not for a single-payer system, but he clearly believed at that time that that was the best plan. Well, he's cha as, you know, as the campaign progressed, and I think he saw the kind of uh, opposition to this kind of program by the vested interest, I think he saw that he'd be fighting uh, these power battles against uh, pharmaceuticals companies and insurance companies, medical organizations, uh, lawyer organizations. I mean, there's a lot of uh, opposition to it, but a lot of the opposition is not in favor of the American people. And I think he is being pragmatic, and I think that has, has been his mistake. I don't think uh, pushing this thing quite as fast has been a good idea. I think this is an extraordinarily complicated th measure. And I am afraid that if we get a, a bad measure that goes through, 
it'll set health reform back many, many years. Dr. Shannon, I'm going to interrupt because we're out of time, but I want to say on that point, we certainly agree. Moving fast is not as important as moving well and doing it efficiently. Thank you. And by the sounds of the sirens in the background, I think somebody is being rushed to a medical facility now. I hope they're insured. So, but thank you very much, Dr. Shiner. It's an honor to have you with us.